Hi, in today's video, I'm going to show how to convert a virtual machine from vSphere ESXi up to 6.x, like 6.7, to Proxmox, the latest 7.1. It should work with any version of Proxmox. And uh, I'm not using the instructions that uh, appear in the Proxmox website. I'm trying to use something a bit simpler. We'll need to mount the vSphere data store that holds these virtual machines to a Linux machine. So if, for example, you used FreeNAS to host those machines and you have a Linux machine, use iSCSI or NFS uh, to mount this uh, directory which holds the virtual machines to the Linux. You can mount with read-only. We don't plan to write anything to this directory. Next one, make sure that your Linux machine has uh, an application called QMU image. I'll write it right here. This utility will convert from the VMDK, the VMware um, disk format to QCOW2 format, which uh, Proxmox and KVM everyone uses. So we'll use this app to convert. If you don't have vSphere or ESXi machines, uh, you need to find some parameters for this virtual machine, such as numbers of cores, memory, you can look at the VMX file inside this directory which holds this VM to see how much memory, how many cores, because we'll need it once we are moving to Proxmox to create this machine. It's not being done automatically or something like that. We also need plenty of space in the Linux machines because we're not, we're not going to perform the conversion in the directory which holds these vSphere virtual machines. We're going to create it outside, so you'll need some space. Uh, most of the time it's, uh, it really depends on your VM. It could be a few dozens of gigabytes or a few hundreds or maybe terabytes. Make sure that you have the space. Let's start with something simple. Let's look at the directories which holds the virtual machines. So here in my machine, I have it here. I have these machines that were uh, in one of the vSphere that I had previously. And uh, let's take the Win10 machine. And we'll convert this machine. Actually, I can't because I already used it previously. So I have another machine, which is... First, we'll need to make sure that we have the VMDK. The VMDK, and as you can see, there are a few VMDK files, and that's perfectly okay. This will uh, basically have the disks, the virtual disk in the vSphere, and we're going to convert it. And we'll use this specific VMDK and this VMDK file will know exactly which file, which delta to use and everything. So you don't have to worry which VMDK file to convert. You just take the VMDK which has the same uh, virtual machine. So for example, in this case, win-10-work.vmdk is the same as win-10-work.vmx, which is the real machine. Now, if we look here, we can see that the memory size here is 4096, which means it is a four gigabyte uh, machine and it has four cores. That's what I need. And that's perfectly okay for me. Right now, we'll need to put it somewhere. Now, since this Linux machine also hosts the Proxmox uh, NFS directory, which hold the virtual machines, I'll simply go to my machine, which has the KVMs and the images directory. 
Right here, we'll need to create a, vir a virtual machine ID, which should be the same as the new future virtual machine ID. Unfortunately, Proxmox is not that flexible. So for example, right now we'll need to create a directory. Let's call it 106. And uh, we'll convert the machine and the new converted machine disk will sit inside this 106 directory. Q image convert from minus F, this is the original format, VMDK. This is the place where I'm putting the directory win.tan work. We'll use this disk name from the vSphere and we're going to convert it to QCOW2, which is output QCOW2 and we'll call it win.10.qcow2 I forgot 106 inside this directory and it started doing the conversion unfortunately QMU image doesn't have any progress bar or anything like this so you'll have to wait until it finishes so I'll be right back when it finished the QMU image convert up did it thing and now the machine is converted if we look at file in this directory win 10 we can see that this is qemu qcow image and that's the size the next thing that we'll need to do is to change its, na its name that proxmox will know this is a qcow2 image that it can use so let's look at the 105 and as you can see the format of this QCOW2 should be VM, the VM ID that we'll create, disk-0 which means this is the first disk and since we only you have and since we only have one disk it should be disk-0. So let's go into the 106 and let's move this name to vm106 disk dash zero dot qcow2 now we have the machine name and we're going from here to the proxmox web user interface to create the machine let's create the vm we'll click right here and we'll give it the id 106 just as the same as the disk image uh, directory that we created previously We'll call it Win10, you can call it anything you want, you cannot use any spaces or characters like this, it's very restricted. Click Next, here we don't use any media right now, but we actually might need to use, we'll need to use the Virt, yeah, Virt.io Win which uh, host this is a host the drivers that you'll need for your os will take the microsoft windows and windows 10 click next and right now we'll probably leave it like this in terms of um scuzzy controller i think the default should be fine Click next, delete the disk. We don't need to create new disk. We already converted the existing one and click next again. Let's put two sockets and two cores. Leave it the default. It was four gigabytes, so we'll leave it at four gigabytes. Next, E1000, it's a built-in driver inside Windows 10, so you don't have to reinstall anything. It should be OK. Click Next. These are the parameters. Click Finish. Once it was finished, let's click on the 106. And as you can see, we have a new configuration, but no disks. If we'll go to the storage, and as for disks, we'll see the VM. But unfortunately, Proxmox doesn't let you take this one and just put it inside the 106 through the web interface, 
you have to do it manually. One thing that we don't know yet is what is the size converted virtual disk. Originally in this video I've added information how to use the kernel module NBD in order to find the virtual disk size, but it looks like the QMU image command has info parameter to show you the actual disk size. So with this command you can basically look at it and use it. And we basically need to go to the Proxmox machine and go to etcpv qmu server and here we have the 106 that we've created and let's go to the end you can use nano i just use vim right now we'll need to add the line which states which disk is it so we'll use sata zero uh, in my case it's NAS for disks the virtual image ID the name of the disk dot qcow2 uh, I don't use the cache I basically I'd like to use it as a write back since I have UPS and everything, and the size is 300 gigabyte. We'll save it, and now we'll go back to Proxmox. Let's look at the Winnote 106, and as you can see, we have the disk and the size. So let's try to operate it. One thing that is very important, specifically on Windows, once we move the machine from uh, vSphere to Proxmox or to any solution, you might need to reactivate your license. So let's turn the machine on. Let's go to console. Let's start it. Yeah, something that I always forget. I did some checking and I was mistaken in few parameters. So first, you'll need to check your machine if it's UEFI or standard old legacy BIOS, because they're not compatible with, with each other, which means if your machine disk is in UEFI, it simply won't boot and the, uh, the system will ignore it and will try to boot the next device. First thing that I'll have to change is the BIOS. And here you basically need to select UFI if your machine is a UFI. If not, see BIOS, it's perfectly okay and it's fully compatible. Uh, machine, if you use, uh, if you want to use UFI, you need to change the machine type from uh, 440FX to Q35 and use the latest one. If I'm not mistaken, 6.1 here is the latest one. And uh, click OK. And after that, we can go to the console. We can click Start Now. Yes. And it should start. If you go and boot a machine and it starts a boot loop, as you can see, it booted it successfully. If you go into a boot loop situation, you can go to the terminal and kill minus nine the process, but you can also go here and click stop. This one will try to kill it gracefully. And this one only works if the machine is trying to reset itself. If it, for example, if it's stuck on the BIOS, for example, this uh, stop will not work and you have to kill minus nine the process from the terminal. So right now we have the Windows 10, we can log in, but before we do it, let's do a shutdown because I removed a device when I checked if everything is okay and I removed the CD-ROM. So let's add the CD. 
and let's uh, put it to the SATA storage. I have it on ISO, vert. Uh, this is the latest one. Uh, by the way, if you want, you can use the options here for QMU guest agent. This will check and if the machine is alive and it will tell you what is the IP of the machine. Because without it, you don't have the IP of the machine and you have to basically go to the console, login, IP config or IP add to check what is the IP and only that. Uh, you can run a guest stream if you use the SSD emulation in the disk. So we have it here. Let's go back to the console. And uh, just before we, I think it should be okay. It takes time, you might need to reboot it again. And right now we have this one, Vertio Win Guest Tools. And let's say I agree. And this one should basically install the agent for QMU and it should also install the drivers so you can uh, use everything that you need. And after that, you'll need to reboot again. By the way, this Vertio Win and uh, this all tools thing, you can use this with KVM without any problem. Okay, installation successful and let's reboot the machine. Okay, let's log in. And the next thing that you want to check is the device manager. Right click on this PC, manage, go to device manager. And as you can see, all the drivers are here. The next thing that you can do is go to the settings, to applications, and look for VMware tools. You can uninstall it. Now, before you uninstall it, if you plan to use uh, VMware SVGA drivers, uh, you should leave it. Uh, you should leave the VMware tools installed. If you don't plan to use it and you plan to use RDP or anything else remotely, you can basically uninstall everything and uh, reboot. Another thing. Let's go to the summary, and as you can see. We have the IPv6 and IPv4 uh, IPs, uh, the loopback and the Ethernet uh, instant zero network interface. So now that we've finished, yeah, it wants another reboot, of course. You can use the Windows 10 just like you used it in the ESX environment. It should work without any problem. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments or everything, I'll be happy to hear. And I'll see you on the next clip.